and um, after, after my distinguished guest uh, address their uh, topic, we will go to Q and A. All right, then I'm going to share my. Okay. Very good. Um, the keynote address will be given by His Excellency, Dr. Ephraim Lemango. He's the commissioner for the Job Creation Commission. Um, he will be speaking about the COVID-19 impact on Ethiopian economy and how employers should cope with the current situation and support outline from the government. Um, following the keynote address, um, Mr. Alamayu Konde Kwera is a country head for MasterCard Foundation in Ethiopia. He will be addressing the Young Africa Works, especially in particular in Ethiopia, and what MasterCard Foundation is uh, partnering in relation to the virtual setting. After that, we will invite Helena Alekesa, the country manager for ET Jobs, also in Form Mind Solution. She will be talking about what ET Jobs is doing to implementing a virtual work plan and some of the tools to support uh, the remote team and as well as uh, virtual service and hiring. She will address that. Then finally, Ms. Siha Mayela, the pro program director for Dereja.com. She will introduce about the Dereja virtual plan. Uh, this will be including our uh, e-learning platform, as well as the virtual job fair that has been organized for end of July. Then I would come back and uh, also give a presentation. Now I would uh, open the mic to keynote address by His Excellency Dr. Ephraim Lamango. Thank you so much for making time. I know you would have to go uh, uh, for a few minutes of our presentation. And if those of you have a, a question directly to the Job Creation Commission, you can either uh, uh, email us or text us and we'll forward it to the Job Creation Commission in, in, in such a way that we'll respond. I also understand there are some people from the Job of Job Creation Commission, and they will be able to, if they raise their hand, they will be able to respond to some of the questions that you have if in the case of that, Dr. Ephraim had to leave us. All right, thank you, and uh, over to you, Dr. Ephraim. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Yusuf, uh, for the opportunity. Um, my name is Ephraim. I'm uh, the Commissioner for the Jobs Creation Commission. And I will uh, primarily focus on explaining what are the possible estimated um, impacts of uh, COVID-19 on the Ethiopian economy uh, by giving a, a perspective of how the global change is uh, affecting us. And of course, our lockdown measures or containment measures in Ethiopia as well. Uh, and I'll try to also iterate some of the key measures being taken by the Ethiopian government in order to um, absorb or ameliorate the shock uh, on several uh, private sector actors and also on additional demand that has uh, arisen uh, that has arisen from uh, um, uh, COVID-19. Uh, in addition to the measures, I, I would also use the opportunity uh, to also describe what are the possible opportunities this crisis is also availing us, uh, given that every crisis has also an opportunity depending on how we see it. And also we'll try to suggest possible coping up measures for uh, many of the employers who will be joining this webinar. I think as most of you know, it's been already um, uh, more than three months since we started speaking about uh, COVID-19, originally started as a health crisis and that later on transitioned into an economy crisis, uh, unless and otherwise the economy crisis is addressed with a good possibility uh, that it might become a social crisis. Uh, as most of you might have understand, uh, the current state is um, a concurrent decrease in both demand and supply, if you look at it from an economic perspective, uh, whereby since uh, the containment measures we are advocating are heavily focusing on um, you know, staying at home, uh, closing the public spaces, and at the same time, uh, closing schools and such, uh, uh, which is a, a global measure, not only measure taken in Ethiopia, but many other uh, countries have also taken that. So many of our trading partners globally, uh, looking at it uh, both from a manufacturing output and at the same time, even uh, uh, the, the global travel industry as well, uh, as well uh, have also freezed, uh, so much to say. Um, and this clearly shows that every country is taking um, some form of containment measures that range from um, a simple lockdown uh, that only prohibits um, key uh, non-essential uh, movement of people 
uh, up to a level of a draconian measure where there is a complete lockdown with an intention of containing the spread of the virus. Um, so the economic impact is the cost actually we pay uh, to contain the virus. Uh, we estimate that there is a greater risk of um, increasing health expenditure globally and for a country like Ethiopia uh, and for many other African countries as well. So there will be expenditure, additional expenditure required uh, to avail the required medical services for people who might um, be affected by the virus and also the additional expenditure required to teach uh, people on mitigation strategies and containment strategies as well. Uh, and further, this is going to be followed by also the economic impact caused by all forms of containment measures, which leads to a decrease in supply or which is a decrease in production because people are staying at home uh, and also a decrease in demand uh, because people are not consuming and the investment would also be a little bit uh, uh, will be affected as well as people are likely to, to have this wait and see behavior. Uh, which is a, a, a robotic response of everyone that might necessarily happen uh, when you have uncertain, uncertainty uh, or unpredictability in the current stance. So uh, our commission, uh, our commission's experts, which uh, I extend my uh, uh, gratitude and appreciation, uh, they have done our internal analysis uh, to estimate what are the possible impacts on uh, jobs and income. Uh, on different level of scenarios, um, a low level scenario, a mid level and a high impact scenario as well. Uh, here I'm going to tell you what is the mid level impact scenario that we expect, uh, unless and otherwise uh, uh, we have intervened both the government and the private sector actors as well. Uh, primarily, we estimate that over the next three months period, given that the crisis continues for three months period, there is the likelihood of about 1.4 million jobs being threatened in all urban service sectors, manufacturing and construction. Uh, if the crisis continues for the next six months, uh, the number of jobs that will be threatened uh, or that will uh, fall under risk uh, might increase to 1.7, 1.8 million over six months period. There is also a, co a contemporarily uh, uh, a possible income loss to uh, people who are in vulnerable employment, particularly people who are self-employed, and those who are on temporary employment uh, and at the same time those who are uh, uh, in the informal economy uh, who are likely to sustain an income loss of uh, you know between uh, 60 to 80 percent but uh, to be safe we have taken some 50 percent of income loss and given that um, uh, estimate we believe that 1.9 million self-employed people in Ethiopia or those in vulnerable employment are likely to lose an estimate of about 260 million dollars uh, over three months period and this will double if the crisis continues for six months period. So these people are likely to, to, to want for um, a safety net measure, uh, a sort of a survival measure uh, during this um, impact period. Uh, so we have sensed the possibility of such an impact could also extend towards agriculture uh, with two uh, major pathways. One is if uh, the spread of the virus also affects the rural area which is not necessarily a remote, a remote possibility, but there is a lower possibility of this happening depending on the success of our containment measures. Uh, but agriculture is going to be affected by uh, the disruptions in supply chain globally, uh, which affects uh, considerable import of uh, many of the inputs we use, such as fertilizer, animal feeds, and also even our exports of key commodities that used to be uh, exported to our common trading partners, such as uh, uh, Europe, US and Asia, which are currently uh, not really uh, importing as much as they should or as much as they used to uh, from countries like us. Uh, so we estimate if this continues in the same manner in the, in the planting season, uh, this might lead to about a loss of about $900 million um, for uh, uh, an aggregate uh, loss to productivity due to a delay in uh, uh, fertilizer inputs uh, and also a disruption in export. This altogether um, could also be further compounded if agriculture is also affected by uh, the current spread of locusts, and which is a, a phenomena that's happening in East Africa. Uh, so having this in mind, the Ethiopian government has taken this quite seriously from day one, and there has been several measures taken uh, under the leadership of the prime minister, where there is a national steering committee uh, leading different measures, including um, starting from preparation, uh, of um, uh, 
food reserves uh, and, and, and also um, expanding our safety net measures um, and, and mainly also making sure that people are aware of uh, the, the, the prevention methods of the virus and also proper measures being uh, taken to <clears throat> contain the spread of the virus along with preparations for medical services, uh, both at the capital and at regional cities and beyond as well. So I must say that um, th this, this crisis is the time where a considerable uh, part of the government has come together to be able to respond, because as we all know, this requires a sort of a whole of government approach. And that response has also further percolated into contemplating what are the key economic measures that we might take as a nation. Uh, so far, uh, the first measure that has been taken as well was uh, basically to provide additional liquidity for the banks so that the banks will be able to avail additional credit for many of the industries affected. We know that in Ethiopia, the hotel industry, the hotel and travel industry is drastically affected given the current restriction in mobility. Uh, many of them operating under 5% uh, hotel occupancy rate, which necessitates many of them. I think we have seen also a recent report that close to half of them are uh, compelled to close their hotels until uh, things improve. Uh, and we also understand that the decrease in export and import also affects manufacturing. We know that there are several uh, micro, small and medium enterprises who have been operating in the manufacturing industry who has been uh, heavily impacted because major importers and buyers are not currently uh, uh, buying from this in the manufacturing industries. But above all, I think it, it's quite important for all of us to consider uh, that this also parallelly affects the um, a growing in a manufacturing industry in Ethiopia, because Ethiopia, as, um, as our major aim is to really strengthen our industry, manufacturing industries, uh, so that we can transition from agriculture-led to industry-led uh, uh, economy. And one of our major flagship project, which is the industrial uh, parks, is also affected because of um, a decrease and in fact cessation of many of the orders they had. So we are trying to consider measures on how we can keep employees there. The government measure focused mainly on two issues. One is keep businesses afloat, keep businesses uh, as much as possible in, in, in uh, the minimum uh, operational level as much as possible, uh, and making sure that employees are not laid off. Uh, so considering this, um, uh, generally we are now in discussion within the central government to provide both fiscal support and also take monetary and monetary measures as well to be able to encourage uh, for businesses to stay afloat. Just to stay a little, I mean, to state a bit of uh, specific measures we are currently uh, discussing includes uh, a reduction of tax uh, from um, uh, building rents and office rents that is normally paid by uh, merchants to uh, the uh, revenue authorities. Uh, and secondly, is also a reduction of or cancellation of income tax for two to two, three months period, particularly payroll tax for employees and at the same time, uh, profit tax at the end of the year. And the whole intention of this measure is uh, to offer merchants uh, or business owners with the required liquidity for them to continuously to continue to pay salaries of uh, their employees so that as things, as, as, as things um, improve, that they can go back to business uh, uh, as fast as possible. Uh, and uh, in terms of monetary measures, uh, the central government is also working on mobilizing additional resources. Uh, uh, from development partners because unlike many other developing countries, we don't have such um, a, a huge resource or a war chest where we can actually open and avail as a fiscal stimulus. Uh, so we have to mobilize it uh, and there are um, uh, encouraging steps that have been taken so far and uh, global supporters and development partners are also willing to avail this support. We have also heavily focused on expanding our safety net program, the urban safety net, so that we can cater to people who might lose jobs, those who are in vulnerable employment. And uh, there is also a greater focus in supporting uh, micro, small and medium enterprises with an intention of availing liquidity and also uh, postponing debt payments for those who have taken uh, credit from microfinances and also some of uh, uh, the uh, regular banks as well. So those at the regional level have already started taking measures, including uh, waiving shared rents for many enterprises and also um, waiving also utility payments. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, government is also supporting regional governments to be able to also postpone uh, date payments of all uh, enterprises that have taken credit from uh, microfinance enterprises, I mean microfinance institutions. 
uh, and uh, uh, my dear friend Alamaye is also on this panel who who will be speaking about the joint measure we are taking between uh, the Ethiopian government, the Jobs Creation Commission, uh, and the Mastercard Foundation as well. And many other partners are also trying to put in additional resources to support micro enterprises, micro, small, and medium enterprises, uh, since they are the ones uh, to be heavily affected if uh, this uh, crisis continues uh, in such a way. So our intention is to, as much as possible, uh, within the remits of our capacity as a government, to be able to support the private sector so that many of the businesses could remain afloat and the employees could actually uh, uh, continue to hire. Uh, I think one of the key opportunities this crisis avails is digital, uh, um, I mean, digital opportunities. Uh, one of the things that this virus is actually teaching us is to live and work differently, I believe. Uh, and uh, having that in mind, I think uh, uh, digital work for those which is able to be, uh, I mean, for those their nature of work permits, uh, we really encourage employers to continuously uh, use digital platforms. And even from a jobs perspective, uh, this time has also increased the demand for uh, digital services, including uh, electronic payment, uh, electronic delivery, uh, 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 and also uh, several electronic marketplace interventions. You may have noted to enable this uh, uh, two weeks ago, the Ethiopian government has already approved two important laws. One is the directive that permits mobile payments uh, and online payments for non-financial institutions, which has been one of the great limitations for many of the companies uh, uh, who would like to implement financial solutions uh, being non-financial institution. Secondly, we have also enacted the electronic transaction law, which permits many of the transactions to be able to be implemented. So we are taking our measure and uh, we strongly believe the private sector will also take considerable measures in encouraging digital work uh, and, and also uh, uh, remote working and remote learning as well. So I guess this gives us the impetus required for us to uh, explore new ways of doing things in general. So we are very hopeful as a government, uh, taking all the required fiscal monetary measures and also support to enterprises to repurpose uh, their production line to produce uh, COVID related materials. Uh, in addition to the health and safety net measures we are taking, uh, we are strong believers that this time will pass uh, and will emerge stronger than ever as a nation and uh, uh, as a global community as well. Uh, having that in mind, we strongly encourage businesses to use their all available uh, resources to remain in business uh, uh, by decreasing their obviously uh, uh, unnecessary costs and uh, mainly uh, keeping their employees uh, during these difficult times. Of course, at the end of the day, uh, solidarity is what is most required as a nation, uh, because we all understand um, if we lay off our employees by this very day, there is a good possibility that we'll have difficulty to go back to the productivity level uh, that we used to have uh, after uh, the crisis ends. And I think we will need to also explore possibilities of uh, continuously engaging with uh, incumbent employees uh, using virtual methods, uh, including what we are now trying to do with uh, uh, the Reja.com uh, with an intention of having um, a, a virtual job fair, uh, which also tells our um, um, solidarity. And at the same time, uh, beyond that, our uh, tenacity to continue to do things as they used to be, regardless of uh, the key problems that we are facing now. So every crisis has its own opportunity uh, but what it all requires is uh, to remain together uh, to, uh, to, to, to pass through this time but as a government our commitment stays solid and uh, we're taking measures step by step to support the businesses and many other uh, ameliorate impacts of um, uh, COVID-19 as well. I will leave uh, I think if this is called a keynote this must have been a presentation poll but uh, I will stop here and I'll take questions uh, whenever the time is there. Thank you so much. You are mute, Yusuf. Yusuf, you are, you are on mute. mute, Yusuf. You are on mute, Yusuf. Here you go. Now you can hear me. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ephraim. Uh, it was really enlightening and encouraging uh, information that you have given us. Um, we're very happy to partner with your uh, organization and um, we will continue to do so. Uh, just uh, a little bit before I go to Mr. Anamayo, I just wanted to recognize uh, 
two of our key participants today. Uh, one is the director from uh, Dubai Chamber of Commerce, uh, Tiba Mola. She's also interested to work with the uh, JCC. Um, her organization uh, has been encouraging a lot of uh, Dubai business uh, to open an office and create jobs. And I'm, I'm proud to say that we are the member of uh, Business Council Advisory Committee with uh, Dubai Chamber. And we're also looking at into uh, looking at for job opportunities in Dubai, uh, sending the best to work uh, abroad. Welcome, Tiba. I know we have a question for Dr. Efrem, but I'll send it on a private uh, message for him. I would also like to recognize Jacob from Switzerland. Um, he is a CEO and for uh, Doskalis, one of the leading private equity firm uh, in Ethiopia and East Africa in general. And his organization has been interested in investing in the companies that actually create a lot of jobs. And they're very much excited. They're on a second phase uh, investment and they're looking to invest quite heavily in Ethiopia in such a way that it will create jobs in the thousands. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming. And um, I will go now to Mr. Alemayo. And Mr. Alemayo uh, is a country head for uh, Masaka Foundation in Ethiopia. And he will uh, share with us uh, what Masaka Foundation is thinking and what they would be assisting in the virtual things. And at this time, also, I would like to say thank you very much. They're our partner. They've been funding most of our projects, especially with the youth employment. And uh, they are one of our partners also to establish this uh, virtual job fair that we're going to be launching in two months time. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Yusuf, uh, just for, for inviting us. And actually, after uh, being in Ethiopia for the last uh, maybe close to one year, this is a good opportunity for us also to tell about ourselves. Uh, to say, many people ask us, why are you here? Who are you? Are you the same as MasterCard, the credit card company? Uh, like, you know, there are so many questions coming up. And uh, so just I want to be, uh, I want to make sure that uh, many people know about the MasterCard Foundation, what we do, how we do our philosophy, uh, and also what we are trying to, inv to intervene now in the COVID-19 uh, programming. Uh, let me share my, let me share my screen. Okay, good. So I'll try today, I will try to, uh, to cover four areas which I was asked about. And uh, first, who, what is MasterCard Foundation doing? Uh, and how, what are we doing in Ethiopia? What do we mean by Young Africa Works? And what MasterCard Foundation COVID-19 Recovery and Resilience Program? These are the four areas which I will be covering in a very, uh, close to 10 to 15 minutes period. Uh, the MasterCard Foundation uh, uh, mission is to advance learning and promote financial inclusion for people living in poverty. This is our charitable objective. We are set up in Canada and under these two major areas to promote, to advance learning and promote financial inclusion. And uh, we, our vision, which we always say proudly is we are seeking for a world where everyone has the opportunity to learn and prosper. Um, this is our uh, vision. So what MasterCard Foundation has been started, uh, uh, it has been created by MasterCard International, which is a credit card company in 2006 as a separate and independent foundation where it is, uh, uh, where it's uh, funding all, uh, programs, everything is decided independently by its own board of directors, CEO, president, and all its senior leadership. Uh, we are blessed with funding uh, that we have grown uh, to more than $30 billion, which used to be $500 million in 2006. Now it has grown to $30 billion in assets, which we are considered as the third largest foundation, private foundation in the world. And uh, these blessings, we want to make the best use of these blessings uh, we are given. We have four regional hubs, offices in six African countries, including Ethiopia. And we have been working in 33 African countries where we have tried hard 
to impact uh, more than 32 million uh, young people. Uh, very recently, like two, a year and a half or two years back, we launched the Young Africa Work Strategy uh, with the goal of enabling 13 million young people in Africa to secure dignified and fulfilling work. I would like to stress the fact here that uh, we want to go beyond skill development. We want to go beyond training. We want to make sure that young people get a dignified and fulfilling jobs. So this is one of our, this is uh, our new strategy, which we call it Young Africa World. I will come back to it a bit later. Why Africa? Um, why not uh, Asia? Why not other places? So why do we want to go to Africa? So uh, we have uh, basically by 2035, uh, more, more young people will enter Africa's workforce each year than in the rest of the globe, than in any other continent and uh, significant gap between uh, the number of young people who are seeking work, who are looking for work and to those who are uh, being employed, who get that opportunity. But also uh, there is a mismatch, which everyone talks about. There is a mismatch between skill and what the market looks like, what the market wants to do. I think this is the main essence of what ETO Jobs is doing. Uh, how can we match the demand and the supply? We supply young people from universities across the country. We supply young people from top technical, vocational, educational training institutions across the country. Lots of institutions are in the country, but are they really matching what the private sector looks? Are they, are these young people able to start their own businesses? Are they able to employ, to hire other young people? This is something which the MasterCard Foundation is more passionate about. And the other one is, the third point is uh, why we need to work in Africa is uh, because of, the, because of the, the needs for linking job seekers with employers or entrepreneurs to further opportunities. There are huge lots of young people who have entrepreneurial mindset. There are huge lots of young people who can develop a just just watch the social media, what we are hearing, watching to different uh, platforms, you can see lots of young people with opportunities uh, to start business, to create something, to create solutions on a very well identified problem. Good, so what is Young Africa Works? So for us, uh, Young Africa Works, as I mentioned earlier, it is, uh, our goal is to get uh, to enable young people, which are 30 million young people in Africa, particularly young women, to secure dignified work by 2030. This is Young Africa Works for the MasterCard Foundation and our partners across the globe. And we are we are we are aiming to achieve this uh, by implementing 10 country-specific programs. Uh, this can include strengthening education, vocational training growing, supporting, nurturing entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, entrepreneurship across the financial, financial uh, services as well, linking them with financial services, by also trying to connect jobs to em employers. This is uh, one of the areas which we are looking for. So we, we used to do this before, but also now we are trying to fine tune this approach. And also we want to implement regional programs uh, to deep dive into education, entrepreneurship, and digital solutions, particularly also focusing on financial inclusion. Uh, what's different from the previous approach? What we, we used, to, we we have been in the uh, have been uh, working since 2006, but uh, for, but for the last two, two and a half three years, we have tried to uh, more of work with African organizations, including uh, government, private sector, and other donors. Uh, we want to empower young women uh, for your uh, information. Uh, we want, we are very much ambitious in our uh, engagement of young women into this program. We are looking for 70% of our targets of this uh, 30 million, uh, 20, uh, I think 21, uh, 21 million would be women. And uh, we also want to use technology to drive impact and scale. Uh, and above all, 
as a learning organization, which we have been for the last number of years, what we are, where we are now always comes up from our evidence, from what we have done. We try to collect evidence, we try to learn every, each and every day we engage with different partners, each and every day we work with, in different countries. We learn, we learn, we learn, and we share. So, uh, so where we are now is largely based out of what we have learned. Uh, this is our very, very uh, high level uh, measure of success for us. As you can see here, uh, we start with young people uh, on entrepreneurship, on linking on with employment, on also train. But in Ethiopia, we have, uh, this is for Ethiopia, I will come back a bit later, but millions of young people will secure dignified jobs. But there are a lot of indicators, milestones, like increased access to and quality education, reduced time between education and employment, increased number, of, increased number of employment opportunities and access to financial services for entrepreneurs. All this will move into the next high level impact. And at the end of the day, our success story influence in regional contexts as well as countries. Uh, our, this will all, we believe that this, this will all lead us to our, our opportunity for all of us to learn and prosper. Uh, let me move a bit to our strategy. I'm sure that I may I may not give I'm, I'm not uh, I may not I may be giving you lots of uh, things to to consume uh, just in a few minutes. But just I want to let you know that uh, when we come in into a country, we start discuss by discussing with the heads of state. In Ethiopia, we came in uh, discuss with. Uh, Her Excellency, uh, the, the President, also with uh, senior uh, Prime Minister office officials. Then uh, we do an in-country research to determine the comparative advantage to enhance the growth of key industries, to strengthen education and vocational training, to support job generative entrepreneurs, and to connect young people to employment. These are how we come up. And um, in our There are common elements across uh, target countries. For example, we have now Ethiopia, Uganda, Ghana, Senegal, uh, Kenya, uh, Rwanda. Almost in all of, almost all countries, affordable finance for entrepreneurs is one key enabler which came out. Relevant and quality education came out as well. Effective transition and linkage came out. Uh, policy support and digital economy has come out very strongly. So um, a lot, uh, across the range of sectors as well, agriculture, agribusiness, agri-food system, service industry, creative industry, tourism and hospitality, uh, micro, small, medium enterprises across all areas have come out in almost all target areas. But how about Ethiopia? What, what do we mean when we say Young Africa works Ethiopia? Uh, we have, in each country, we, inter we We interpret, uh, we interpret Young Africa works into different countries. And while taking the whole, the overall principle of Young Africa works in each country, there could be priority sectors identified. There could be different intervention areas and we could contextualize it. In Ethiopia, uh, we had a very, a very uh, robust discussion and research in various areas with Job Creation Commission has been one of the, one of our, uh, Uh, really serious, serious collaborator partner in this area. We have tried to see which sector we come in. We don't want to come as found as Mastercard Foundation. We don't want to come in uh, prescribing our sectors. We don't want to come in and say we want this sector. We wanted to find out which sector are priority sectors in each country. So what you are seeing here on the screen, like manufacturing, agriculture, agro processing services, Tourism, ICT, digital technology, all these uh, have not come from us. It's come out from the country, from the nation itself. And, and unfortunately, uh, what we have identified in our case in, internally has also aligned with uh, what Job Creation Commission has identified, what the country has identified. So these are the key areas, sectors and enablers which we are working with. Uh, as I told you, we came in a very We came in very recently, it is just less, less than one year, and we have uh, thus far committed uh, on sector focus, basic focus and cross-cutting. We already have identified and committed for with five partners, 
of about 130 million US dollars. Uh, 1.6 million young girls and boys would be uh, ensured to get in dignified and fulfilling jobs by 2025. Uh, but also, we also want to make sure that we are engaging at system level. We are seriously engaging with Job Creation Commission, with Ministry of Innovation and Technology, with Tourism Ethiopia, with Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Sport. We are currently engaging with all of this, but also with the Ministry of Education, which we are on the initial stage. Uh, so just one year, it is just one year, but we are looking forward to, uh, to, to move further. Uh, just for your information, MasterCard Foundation has committed $300 million for, yeah, until 2025, uh, and we are yet to, to move into that. We know that, um, yeah, and we are committed to get 10 million young girls and boys into dignified and fulfilling jobs in Ethiopia. Of the 30 million the foundation has committed, of 30 million MasterCard Foundation has committed 10 million, a third of it is, uh, we believe, it's in Ethiopia. And we have a logical reason for that because of unemployment rate, because of the population itself. So uh, we are expected to work hard, to work hard with, us, with our private sector actors, to work hard with young people, to work hard with academic institutions, with civil society, with government, non-government, everyone. MasterCard Foundation COVID-19 Recovery and Resilience Program. As much as we wanted to move into the direction of uh, 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 implementing Young Africa Works Ethiopia, uh, this happened and this came in. And so uh, before we even jumped into uh, responding to this, we went back to our current partners and other institutions to ask, uh, what are the key challenges? How can we address? In all countries, we are operating. The foundation is operating. What, is it, what, what, how can we turn this challenge into opportunities? What would be, what should we do? Even our partners, even ETO jobs. We ask ETO jobs, for example, what do you think would be the impact on the economy? What do you think would be the impact on social? What do you think would be the impact on your work, which you have committed, uh, you have committed for MasterCard, for, together with MasterCard Foundation? How do you think that will affect the work? And every partner of us came up with a very insightful uh, response. It is a month and a half ago. And they came back, they told us, even they recommended some of the areas which we need to think about. So, um, so uh, we uh, have very recently established MasterCard Foundation COVID-19 Recovery and Resilience Program, uh, focusing focus areas are Canada and Africa. And we have, uh, five major areas which we are trying to cover and during this period. Uh, we provide, we want to provide support for health workers and first responders. Uh, we also uh, are thinking of working, uh, providing emergency funds for students. As you may know, um, the MasterCard Foundation have a very strong and robust scholarship program, which is called MasterCard Foundation Scholarship uh, Program. And uh, we have lots of scholars, so our scholars, plus other students and young people, students may have challenges during this period. So we, so we are open to that. And also we want to access to expand access for micro, small and medium enterprise, especially on financial services and products. Uh, the other area, which is also the subject of this, um, uh, this uh, webinar is about e-learning. How can we make sure that educational institutions can deliver their courses, they do mentorship, uh, they reach students and in a very digital way uh, by enabling uh, in e-learning process. Uh, how many of us, how many of our secondary students, how many of our university students are really currently able to learn? So this is the area which we may support. Um, so the other one is uh, digital solutions for businesses, educational institutions, organizations, and lots of uh, and lots of financial services and other areas. So this is. Overall, in a nutshell, our uh, uh, COVID-19 recovery and resilience program. When it comes to Ethiopia, uh, we have identified six major areas, which I want to show you here. The first one is which Dr. Ephraim has alluded to. It is about uh, ensuring MSMEs remain solvent, retain their employees, and create more innovative and timely responses 
by establishing the MasterCard Count Foundation COVID-19 Recovery and Resilience Program. This one is now being tweaked. Currently, there is a, pro there is a, a partnership being uh, developed now to, to get up to 12,000 micro small medium enterprises uh, to save or to, to enable them to, to be active uh, in the market. You, as you can see, like as you have heard from Dr. Efren, uh, so, uh, micro and small and medium enterprise are getting out of business. They are really at a, risk, at a risky situation. Uh, so how can we save them? How can we help? How can we, how can we contribute? Our, uh, the foundation would like to contribute its share and, and uh, trying to support this. The second one is supporting digital innovation to avoid the spread of virus and its possible impacts. A lot of areas can be seen in this. Uh, we are currently in partnership, uh, building up partnership with different institutions, uh, promoting e-learning, best training, maybe uh, engagement in green economy initiatives, but also in repurposing the production of capable firms towards the production of uh, COVID-19 response supplies. You know, um, uh, there could be leather industries who may be exporting uh, high quality, high high end leather to Europe. This time they, they can't export that. This time they have to turn their uh, sewing machine into uh, uh, PPEs, into the into the face mask, into guns. Uh, this time we may need to think about helping them to to reinvent uh, their wheel and into, if you will, into the very innovative solution towards addressing the the COVID response while also preserving their staff members while also supporting. Uh, the economy as well. So we don't want them to just get out of the business. Uh, the other one is supporting immediate needs that can be through uh, different areas. And currently we are working on that in, in different ways. And this is exactly what we have, which I have told you. Uh, the first one is on MSME, it's kind of uh, uh, long guarantee facility to decrease, job, to decrease job losses. In supporting digital innovation, we try to work on uh, remote working learning opportunities, cashless payments and marketplaces, digital innovations, and also uh, e-commerce platforms, which we have already started partnering with our in, uh, other partners. Yeah, so maybe uh, supporting on the immediate needs, I may need to say about, it could be supporting health personnel, first responders, front client organizations. Uh, it may be supporting public health campaign. Uh, it may be supporting emergency funds for students and tracking tools. Uh, ever since we started uh, this COVID, uh, we launched COVID-19 Re Recovery and Resilience Program by our CEO and President Rita Roy. Uh, all countries, in all countries, we are operating. Uh, we are working towards uh, taking this challenge into opportunities with our partners, existing and new partners. And I think, uh, let me stop here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Atalamayo. It was really insightful uh, information. And uh, thank you so much for MasterCard Initiative in Ethiopia. It's really, really encouraging. And we're proud to be a partner. And uh, before I go on to my next speaker, I do want to ask uh, Dr. Ephraim, there are a few questions. Would you like to address them? Uh, I know you'd have to leave, or uh, you have time to listen to Helena and uh, Siam. Uh, Yusuf, I think let me use this chance to address it because uh, I have to leave at uh, 10 after 10 uh, on the dot, okay. uh, if that is okay with you. Yes, so I'm going to summarize them. Just for those of you, there are quite a number of questions uh, around uh, income tax and profit tax. Uh, we are bringing on our next lecture, hopefully next Friday, we're inviting someone from uh, the Inland Revenue who can explain about uh, the the new taxation uh, and the impact of the COVID. And we are also inviting um, uh, a labor lawyer who would explain also on the employment law. But I would give um, uh, Dr. Ephraim just to brief a little bit. Uh, uh, the questions are around income tax, employee income tax and profit tax. What would be uh, the government response? and uh, what will be also the post-COVID plan, uh, what we're thinking, that was a question from Biscuits, um, and also 
how the capacity of the digital infrastructure available efficiently to address employee. Do you think all SME private companies have the capacity to access it? Um, those are the uh, areas. I do understand there are some questions about the next wave of COVID. Uh, those questions, maybe we can hold them. I know they are important. Maybe we'll get somebody from Minister of Health to address, but I would ask Dr. Efren to just briefly uh, address those uh, in general, then we can continue with uh, uh, our uh, third speaker. Thank you, Dr. Efren. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Yusuf. Um, I think that the questions that are forwarded by the participants are quite appropriate and very useful ones. And so I will cover them in a way, I will provide a bit of explanation about the state of the income tax, which I think I have seen several questions from colleagues, Akalu and Dosen and such. And how does the crisis affect our job creation plan for this year? As most of you know, we had a plan to create about 3 million jobs. Uh, and so I'll, I'll allude to that. And at the same time, uh, what is the post-COVID plan as well, which is a very insightful question and uh, the digital capability that Yusuf also mentioned. I think it's important for all of us to understand we are in, a, in uncharted territories uh, because we, we work and we live in, uh, in several uh, you know, fluid situations that things evolve over time and we are learning uh, why this is actually happening real time. So it's important to understand that uh, no government has it figured out on what to do next. But uh, having said that, it's important for me also to underline uh, the Ethiopian government. Our focus now is to work on uh, uh, implementing an emergency plan, which is a resilience plan, with a sense of uh, keeping businesses and jobs in place as they are now. And uh, this emergency response will uh, last up to uh, the end of August, 2019 because economic uh, impacts, even though uh, the, the, the virus spread might be uh, contained over the next few months, uh, the emergency response required at an economic level would definitely need to be extended. So an emergency response till August 30, 2020. And then a recovery plan, which uh, uh, will extend for at least a year after that period. So currently, it's, it's, for example, in our commission, we're developing uh, both a resilience and a recovery plan. The resilience plan being focusing on how to implement the key measures we have proposed and how to implement the key measures that are already endorsed by uh, uh, the, the, the prime minister office as well. Uh, so having this in mind, yes, we are preparing for the post COVID period, which is basically a recovery period which requires a lot of investment to uh, bring businesses back to uh, the capacity or the level they are uh, currently now in. Uh, so it, it's important for us to communicate that the current state is an emergency response state, which will continue until 30th August. And it will be followed by at least a one year recovery plan, depending on how fast our economy recovers, which also heavily depends on how the other African countries and low income countries economy recover. Uh, and also the global community's economy recovery as well. Uh, most of you know that I think it's rude to ask this question, how does this affect our 3 million jobs plan? It considerably affects it, I have to admit. Uh, over the year, our plan was to uh, generate about 3 million jobs with the help of the private sector. And of course, um, an expanded implementation of our uh, micro, small and medium enterprise development, in addition to ease of doing business in many innovations. Until the nine month report, which is until the in, until sometime uh, end of uh, uh, March, uh, we have seen close to uh, 2.2 million jobs have been created, uh, both temporary and uh, permanent jobs. Uh, but right after that report from regional governments, we have started hearing that many enterprises are now challenging, uh, many uh, private businesses are now challenged uh, to keep up with the current loss of income and disruption of business. So there is a good likelihood that some jobs might be at risk. So we are saying, I think the fourth quarter of this fiscal year is unlikely to produce any considerable number of jobs. So this risks our um, uh, target to achieve the 3 million jobs uh, for obvious reasons. But so far we have 2.2 million jobs. And if you look at it from the possibility of uh, 1.4 million jobs being threatened, which does not necessarily mean jobs lost. Uh, but if we say 20, 30 or 50% of that is lost, uh, then this will definitely affect from what we have achieved so far, if that explains it uh, right. Uh, when I described about the measures that are being discussed within the government, it is important uh, to, to differentiate between 
Our focus for larger enterprises is to avail additional credits for them to be able to remain liquid or solvent. Uh, and this requires, uh, you know, availing liquidity in the banks or additional finance to the bank so that they could be able to lend. And the first round has already been done by uh, providing 15 billion to many of the private banks in Ethiopia. And we'll see how uh, this progresses and uh, additional measures will be uh, also implemented. But looking at it from uh, a generic intervention uh, perspective, the fiscal measures or the tax related measures we have already taken and my recent information indicates most of them are already being approved. So many of you will hear them uh, in the next uh, one week or so. Uh, but the proposed interventions include uh, waiver of payroll tax, which is a, an income tax of uh, individuals who are wage employed. That's a very important aspect. Uh, so that might be done for two months or three months, depending on how high the impact would be, uh, because at the end of the day, this will uh, cause a loss of income uh, for the government as well, which also uh, impinges on future investment plans as well. Uh, in addition to that, so for, for some of you who have asked whether this has been acted or not, you will hear it in the next one week period. Uh, uh, but this is one of the proposals that's already presented and we know that it is now being endorsed. So in order not to overpromise, this is uh, in the making. That's the best way I guess to describe it. Uh, but in addition to income tax, for uh, one of the key issues for many of businesses is um, an office and working space rent. Uh, and since many of the merchants uh, uh, do actually pay a taxation on the amount of rent they collect uh, from uh, construct from buildings and uh, uh, malls and such, uh, we have decided also to uh, waive uh, the two months or three months period of. Uh, uh, this tax revenue uh, from these rents. So that will definitely encourage uh, many of the merchants not to increase uh, the amount of uh, you know, rent that they impose on their uh, tenants and uh, also encourage many of businesses to remain uh, within, uh, within the business. So this has already been presented. But one thing to keep in mind for all of the people uh, who are attending this webinar is payroll tax and profit tax for any enterprise is an income, including even the one, the, the, the taxation on uh, renting of workplaces and uh, offices. These are revenues that goes into regional government pockets because this belongs to the regional government. So deciding that the federal government would also require uh, to get a buy-in from many of uh, uh, the regional governments as well. And hence the main reason that uh, this decision took, uh, uh, took time as well. So I think th these are the key things. And to summarize it, income tax, yes, it's been discussed, but you will hear it soon. Uh, does it affect our job plan? Yes, it does affect our job plan. And we are trying to uh, you know, adapt to that uh, and focusing mainly on saving the jobs that are threatened uh, to be lost uh, with a focus over the next three to six months period. And then uh, post COVID period of a recovery plan uh, digital capability, larger firms do have a digital capability, but not all enterprises, particularly micro, small and medium enterprises uh, are affected by limitation of digital capability uh, in order. I mean, not all of them have access to Internet and uh, not all of them would necessarily use uh, Internet to do their work because many of the works that they provide requires them on their, uh, I mean, their physical presence as well. Uh, but I think one of the discussions we have with MasterCard Foundation, while we support many of the enterprises that we're planning to support, uh, will also be uh, supporting them not only uh, in the availing liquidity, but also for them to have access to technology. I think we have seen here Telecom in terms of its capability. Um, none of us thought that it would have this capability that will help us operate at this time. I know there is huge demand to operate on the uh, digital space now. Uh, but day by day, they are proving their capability and we're very optimistic that they will continue to absorb the growing demand. And I guess it has proven the future is, um, and it is, it is everything, but I mean, it, it is, it's going to be digital, whether we like it or not. So uh, expanding that capability is already one of the key areas to the current digital transformation strategy that has been uh, adopted by the Ministry of Innovation and Technology is giving an emphasis. So I think from current perspectives and future perspectives, uh, we have um, quite a better prospect. I wouldn't want to respond to the second wave related issue. 
Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Efren. Uh, I think you can hear me. Thank you so much. So I will bring in uh, my next speaker, um, Helena Legessa, the country manager for uh, ETA Jobs, uh, known as also as the InfoMind Solution. And she will be addressing some of uh, ETA Jobs' response to assist our client uh, due to the crisis of uh, uh, COVID-19. All right, Helena, take over, please. Thank you, sir. So, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. So, I just go through some of the things that we've been doing because uh, what uh, what we've seen, just like any other business, our business is also affected by COVID nineteen and. Uh, we see some of our clients struggling with uh, finding way as ways of uh, managing the issue. So we just wanted to share what you're doing in case, uh, you know, it's also uh, helpful to you. And we also want to introduce some of the different things we're doing to also support our clients. So let me just go to the next slide. So when it comes to our customers, uh, we're trying to we're constantly trying to communicate uh, changes. So we have, we're sending out emails, questionnaires, calls, because the best way to find uh, solutions that we have found is actually through our customers. So we, do, we don't want to just say, okay, you know, this is what we're going to be doing. We also want to get feedback from where our customers are. So a lot of our solutions are based on what our customers are communicating to us. Uh, we're also providing different ways to adapt uh, to the situation. We have introduced uh, e-payment systems such as CB, the Hello Cash, so that we reduce the amount of um, monetary transaction between our clients and ourselves. Uh, we've uh, limited our contract exchanges to online uh, exchanges only. Uh, so when it comes to our recruitment solutions, we've adopted a way of conducting interviews uh, through phone, Skype, and systems like Skyrefoo. Uh, so we're always uh, willing to uh, make sure that we provide the same level of service that we've been doing, but also adapt to the situation to ensure uh, the safety of the candidates as well as our customers. So uh, we're also doing internal and external meetings through systems like Zoom and Skype. Uh, so uh, Dr. Efren mentioned we should not always look at this as a, as a challenge, but it has also been an opportunity for us. It has given us the opportunity to really clean up and look at uh, the things that we've been putting on a back burner, saying, OK, we'll get to this, we'll do this after a while. So we've uh, finally managed to launch our IMS website. So we'll send out an email to everybody to inform them that we've uh, finally managed to um, uh, up, uh, finalize our IMS website. And on the IMS website, one of the things that we have done is we're putting out updated contents on COVID-19 from reliable sources like the Ethiopian, uh, the Ethiopian government directives, different tools, that we believe would be relevant to our customers. So uh, those are some of the things that we're doing for our customers. Uh, so when it comes to our internal team, uh, of course, most of our job, most of our work already was uh, based on online transaction, but we've managed to have uh, partial work from home uh, uh, system implemented in our office. So we've managed to provide our team with laptops, internet access, and we've managed to provide all uh, information through uh, Amazon so that people would be able to access all the information they would have access in the office uh, while sitting at home. We're providing full transportation service back and uh, to and from home. We're encouraging meetings and contacts through uh, virtual tools to avoid uh, coming to the office. We've created our work uh, from home guide, which we find to be very uh, important because 
there has to be a consistent communication and understanding between the team and their supervisors as to how the, you know working from home uh, is supposed to be managed most people think when you're at home you're supposed to relax and not uh, necessarily deliver us to the level you're expected when you're at work but we've managed to put in tools different um, check-in mechanisms reporting mechanisms to ensure that working from home is as effective as working from the office uh, we're providing uh, COVID-19 information from the government and from the PH WHO to our staff as constantly as, uh, as possible. We're maintaining engagements through Q&A, state-based assessments. Um, of course, these are very challenging times and I'm sure you understand when you're sitting at home, you're thinking about everything that would affect you, affect your family, affect your job. So we're always trying to encourage people. We have created a Skype group where everybody puts in inspirational videos, quotes, sometimes challenges, games, so that people are as engaged as they would have been at the coffee place, you know, if they were in the office. So everybody is talking about what they're doing, what new thing they've done. Uh, people are uploading different uh, challenges, which we really like, pictures. So that keeps the team engaged and always uh, in conversation. Uh, we all, we're also trying to maintain virtual team and all staff meetings. So we try to, we're trying to have at least once a week all staff meeting to make sure that um, the teams uh, communicate their personal, professional concerns, challenges, uh, and just understand what our plans are uh, going forward so everybody's in the know. Uh, so those are the things that we're trying to do with our team. And of course, for those of, it doesn't mean it has worked for everybody. There are certain um, uh, team members that really have to come to the office because it has not really worked out in terms of their productivity from working from home. And for those who have to come to the office, we're ensuring to provide a safe place to work by providing you know, uh, the required safety accessories like masks, uh, sanitizers, alcohol, everything that needs to be. And we're restricting any walk-in uh, uh, clients to come to our clients or customers to come to our office so that we don't increase any um, risk of introduction to our team as well as our customers. So this has also given us a new perspective. As I said earlier, we're not just looking at it from a point of, of course, it has, as I said, it has significantly affected our business. Almost 50% of uh, uh, our jobs has declined from the same time last year on our website, as well as our recruitment needs. Uh, but we are also seeing this as a great opportunity to really clean up. So one of the new services that we've started and we actually launched this morning is uh, reviewing candidate CVs. So we're providing free candidates review services for our candidates. So anybody could send in uh, their CV, we review it, we give them like a report card on what needs to improve. So once we are sure we have enough candidates that have cleaned up their profile, we're going to start a CV search service for our employers where they can easily go into a system on our website and be able to search CVs because our recruitment is not as easy uh, to manage uh, through the traditional system anymore. Uh, so those are the new services we're providing. We're also providing consultation on possible impacts on employment. So we're providing a lot of our clients, especially those are that are based uh, outside of uh, Ethiopia with information on upcoming regulations, what it means to their contracted employees, what to expect, uh, all things that we're providing. And we're also open to provide the same kind of services for our local uh, employers. Uh, we'd be happy to engage on those conversations. And I'm sure Siham would go into more detail on this, but we have all our Dereja services go uh, virtual, basically. So these are some of the things that uh, we're doing, and I'll be happy to take in any questions. Uh, thank you so much, Helena. Uh, yes, there are some questions. Uh, let's listen to Siham. Then at the end, uh, there are questions to Mr. Alamayo, the, to you, and probably there will be more questions, then we'll keep it to the uh, end of the presentation. Um, I would like to introduce uh, our next speaker. Um, 
Ms. Siham Ayele. She's the project director for Dereja.com. Um, she's been working very hard. She's one of the fastest person that she reinvented her company very quickly into a virtual. And uh, she will tell us uh, what she's been doing and what is, uh, what is in the future, what she's uh, planning to do. All right, thank you, Siham, take over. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for participating and thank you for the previous speakers. I'm very sure you all can see my, sp my screen, yes? Yes, you can put it on, uh, uh, to enlarge it, what do you call it? Yes. Full screen. Okay. No? Good. I would like to, so, you to make it very quick, thank you. Yes, yeah, it's very much. Uh, um, I will make the presentation uh, very quick. And uh, you can also have this material just for the participants to tell you a little bit about Daraja. Um, so it's established within the framework when it's your jobs in 2016. Uh, we see ourselves as a social enterprise business unit. We basically focus on youth and employment, targeting key vet and uh, fresh graduates. Our work basically started in 2016 uh, with the linkage creating opportunity for fresh graduates to enhance their employability skill and for them to have better access uh, with employers and better uh, chance. In 2018, uh, we organized uh, a big national care expo platform with the collaboration of Ministry of Higher Education. In 2018, uh, in 2019, again, uh, our annual job fairs, which are the offline platform for the job seekers to come and uh, be uh, to linked with the potential employers. So these are the uh, one of the services that uh, Daraja provides for fresh graduates, and uh, these two uh, job fairs had uh, a successful rate of uh, link, giving opportunity for 6,000 uh, fresh graduates. Uh, in 2019, we introduced a new program again uh, to actually um, uh, create the top-notch uh, candidates for our employers, uh, the top-notch uh, talent. Uh, this is a Daraja Academy program. Um, so the Daraja Academy program is an, an accelerated program that uh, students will take into the uh, would be an application. They, and then uh, it's a three months training, uh, both personal and professional developed program. In 2020, we had, um, um, we're collaborating with the MasterCard Foundation. Uh, our work basically started in February with the focus of three interventions. The first is the Derecha Academy program and uh, enhancing its capacity and then its reach, uh, targeting not only in Addis, but in also different uh, universities. At the regions. The Daraja.com platform, the website that we currently use, and then to make more uh, the Daraja uh, website more accessible and then uh, to uh, uh, integrate it with e-learning platforms and um, easy access to for both job seekers and employers. Uh, so we also had um, target uh, a job fair or to continue doing our annual job fairs in this eight universities. So in total, uh, we'll be working with universities in, in 2020 to reach about uh, close to 23,000 students. And then our target is to link uh, 10,638 uh, fresh graduates and obviously uh, targeting 70% uh, of this woman. So the value proposition of our programs or our inter interventions are to provide visibility to more youth at no cost other than uh, a view of their job posting on Daraja, uh, remove the spend of uh, need money when they travel to find jobs, newspapers, and uh, when they're planning to see the different job boards, take employers to the youth to make uh, employers more accessible to the youth and to the regional universities, as well as increasing the job linkaging platforms. Um, maximize the inclusion of all youth that are job searching by providing the digital location of our jobs, uh, aggregate a large volume of jobs in our platform, increase the volume of youth that our employers can choose from through the Daraja Academy program, as well as the different training programs that we have for the graduates. And then also increase the possibility of youth being employed by providing training for uh, training at the job fair clinics and the job fairs. So um, because of the COVID-19, um, most of our works has been uh, affected, of course, uh, we're not traveling to the universities, but uh, we're also trying to pull the universities back to us again. So uh, we're transitioning to a virtual job fairs as well as a virtual Daraja Academy programs. 
uh, I'll just basically uh, talk about the, the need for why virtual Jaffa is very much important, but also uh, uh, Yusuf immediately will give you a demonstration how the virtual Jaffa would actually would look like. As a part of a global business, also Daraja is taking the commitment to uh, bring new digital solutions. Um, and then the need to do the virtual Jaffa are basically to improve recruitment efficiency for our clients. Um, uh, this is also by, um, and then also the Daraja Academy Accelerator Program. These are the top notch candidates that will be training within the next, um, till 2021, we'll be targeting 1,000 students. Uh, the previous Daraja Academy program graduated about 65 students in 2019, and 100% of them were uh, employed uh, within uh, companies such as Ethiopian Airlines, HST, and then Zaleman Communication, and then Unilever. Um, so this year, uh, within the 1,000 students, students from these universities, Addis Ababa, Megale, Awasa, Bahardar, uh, Deborah Bahan and Jumma, and then also from the private universities such as uh, St. Mary and then Unity University will be also participating. So um, the other value proposition to do the virtual job fair is also convenience, uh, building candidate pipeline. Uh, we understand that we've been doing a survey with our employers. There are a lot of uncertainty to recruit new fresh graduates at this current time, but also there are a lot of uh, companies, uh, especially NGOs, and then different international companies who've been having different uh, management training programs as well as internship programs, even if, if it is not an immediate need, but having these candidates and participating in the virtual job fair will give them uh, uh, accessible for uh, uh, ready candidates uh, when they're ready to uh, recruit. The virtual job fair is also a secure and a safe space and um, powerful employer branding would be also uh, applicable to this virtual Jaffer. I think Yusuf will go in details on that. Uh, and then definitely these Jaffers are cost effective uh, to, uh, to marketing support as well as, as well as for the recruitment um, needs. If you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And um, uh, definitely it's very exciting and we're very happy and excited to do this as well. All right. Thank you. So much, Siham. I'll quickly go on on the presentation what um, um, Siham was talking about. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, okay, in, in, in collaboration, in partnership with uh, MasterCard, Young Africa Works, and Job Creation, uh, the virtual career fair is scheduled for July 2020. With, uh, as most of you know that we have done a survey uh, and uh, with our client and uh, most of you were excited and you were looking forward to participate in this uh, virtual job fair. We are expecting participating employer from, from our past clients and, um, and um, in this also we're going to have a, a seminar on HR uh, summit will be also virtually. We will invite uh, different speakers and they will be able to present it during the career expo. Uh, if I can show you some of the inside the Kerala Expo, um, it will be uh, imitating exactly like what would have been in a physical um, ex uh, exhibition. So when when a candidate are coming into the our Expo, the, the virtual, they will be able to see which companies are participating with their logos, and they can go to the exhibition hall. They can also go to the auditorium, and they can also go to the networking lounge where they will be able to uh, uh, meet with some of the clients. If, if they go to the exhibition hall, they will be able to see each of the company participating. An exhibitor can have uh, branded with their company and uh, have a video and a picture and a representative. They will be able to chat with, uh, uh, with the representative, representative and as well as also they will be doing one-to-one -one, uh, video interviewing as well. Um, the company representative will be able to see who's online and how many people are waiting. And if their stand is very busy, they can uh, bring in an assistant to, to assist them. 
There will be also in the other frame, the HR uh, virtual summit. Um, all the HR managers will be able to participate and ask a question and listen to a different uh, speakers throughout the day. And each um, candidate will have their own bag where they will be able to download um, information. If, uh, if you can see some of the company here, if I can share this. So the company will brand their uh, stand just as if they would brand it in an actual physical uh, fair. And they will be able to also play videos, uh, upload documents and, and also put out their job vacancies. Um, and they will be able to chat and they will be able to I think we've lost uh, Yusuf, but he's logging in again. I'm calling him. Maybe, did, uh, do you mind if I respond to the questions I was asking? Okay, here he is. Okay, I apologize. It just went out uh, in here. I'm in Nairobi, uh, we occasionally uh, experience uh, power outage, but we're back again, we had a generator back up. All right, so this, uh, it will be, we're very much excited about this uh, virtual job fair and um, uh, candidate will be able to attend some of the training and uh, also they will be able to attend the networking lounge. They can, they can, uh, um, network with a fellow um and uh, uh, let me double check if i am sharing my screen I'm, uh, no you're not yeah is, you can see my screen yeah mm, not yet okay there you go hey all right so uh, so this uh, the um, the candidates will be able to go to a networking lounge and network with either employer or um, uh, candidates that are participating. They will be able to see who's attending at that event. They can see their uh, profile and uh, send them a text to say, hey, can we chat over the coffee? And they can do this from their uh, comfort of their home. Uh, we are also talking with JCC uh, to have a special uh, discount, uh, internet discount. I know the Ethiopian Telecom is working very hard to reduce the cost of accessing the internet. So during this uh, a virtual event for uh, a student or uh, a job seekers looking to find a job, will be able to purchase um, a data bundle at substantially uh, reduced uh, uh, cost so that they will be able to go to the address frame and do the networking and, and also will be able to do um, will be able to also look at the resources and an exhibition hall. So they just, they just simply click on one of the participants and, and they will be able to also go on the next exhibitor and they will uh, look at exhibit E and if they are interested in that, they, they would submit their application or chat with the representative. 
if a representative from the company does not, is not there, they can leave a message so that when the representative is back online, they will be able to communicate directly with the candidate. The employers could also have an access to the candidate and can invite them for a chat and uh, they can see their profile and can say, hey, I'm interested to talk to you. Please come to my exhibition and uh, we'll, um, we'll, we'll have a discussion on that. Then employers will have analytics who visited them, how many, uh, how many candidates visited their stand, what their career uh, profile is, and also which document they download, which video they have watched, and which job they have also accessed. They will be able to do that. And we really are excited. At the end of this discussion, I, put a, I have a poll uh, that I would like to ask all the organization if you are interested to receive more information on this. We are also uh, in the process of uh, building our learning management system for uh, our Deraja Academy and where a student will be able to access the Deraja Academy and uh, they will be able to um, know some of the courses and interact with an instructor and uh, they can see on their dashboard which courses are available, which instructors are available and they can sign up and take some of the, the courses uh, on, online. Uh, so I will stop here and I think I will open to the question and um, some of the questions are directed to Mr. Alemayo. I will uh, direct to Mr. Alemayo then some of the questions for Helena, then Helena will take over. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks. And uh, Mr. Alemayo, if I can ask, uh, what are the emergency plan for MasterCard to tackle barrier like COVID and achieving your 2030 plan, securing for the work uh, for 30 million African women and uh, young people? Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for this question. Uh, it's a very interesting question. Uh, we don't stop what is being done on Young Africa Works Ethiopia for 10 million young. So we are, our current existing partners are working like now, uh, ETO Jobs is working on the Raja Academy. We have not stopped. We will continue working on that. Also, we're working, we'll continue developing, co-developing partnership with new partners on Young Africa Works Ethiopia as it is. But also parallel to that, we are also trying to respond to COVID-19 uh, uh, response. Um, so uh, it's, uh, yeah, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, um, we, we asked our pa existing partners, what are the challenges? How can they cope with it? Uh, some partners may not do now at this point in time if they had a mass training, they can't do it. If they have to go to the field to work with a group of farmers or a group of young entrepreneurs, in, like if they had been planning 20 together, now they can't do it. So there are some reshuffling of activities which we are expecting to come up. But uh, definitely we may have some, we may see some change in the target this year. Like for example, if some partners may have <clears throat> committed to get uh, 10,000 young people into dignified jobs by 2020, that may not happen. We understand that. But uh, all of all our partnership uh, proposals and work plans are not cast in stone. We normally try to make sure that we adapt based on the situation. We can refine, we can review, but also we keep on asking our partners where's the challenge, how how we can address it. Uh, some of our partners, like Geo Jobs and other partners, they have changed their way of training, their way of skill development. You know, as you know, um, to take uh, young people into the next level, they may need we need uh, lots of skill development. Could be technical life skills, entrepreneurial skills, business development skills, leadership skills. All this can be done in a classroom situation, but also can be done in a um, in a in an environment where you now the digital solutions is coming. So this is another opportunity for us also now to to start uh, getting uh, young people into uh, just uh, on digital training, uh, training solutions, but also on the access to finance bit. Uh, yes, on access to finance bit, uh, uh, when I, I, I always keep on uh, being envious on PESA's solution in 
in Kenya and other countries actually because there was lots of uh, digital payments which you can do, you can pay a farmer deep in the rural area, somewhere in one of the rural areas in Kenya, from, uh, from Nairobi, from Mombasa, from somewhere, or in, in, from Arusha. Uh, and also there were opportunities, there are opportunities now, these opportunities have come to Ethiopia now. There is a huge improvement that now we, the digital payment is moving up, financial service providers are being opened, and also, uh, and also, like you know, uh, different institutions, young people, products are being sold out now. They can be up now for market everywhere in, uh, in other place. So uh, the e-commerce platform is opening up. Like one of our partners, Kafia, is working on that, and that's another opportunity. We are also working with Ministry of Innovation Technology on that. So our 10 million target by 2030. I am hoping that we will even exceed that. And I'm sure that we'll prevail out of this current challenge and we'll exceed that. Maybe uh, uh, to Yusuf, if I can go to the next question, there is another question about whether we are simply focusing in Addis or whether we are working also, whether we are focusing on outside Addis. Um, all, well, the foundation, yeah, MasterCard Foundation at, in general uh, is working in all the regions, be it on Young Africa Works Ethiopia or be it in COVID, uh, COVID uh, uh, response program, COVID-19 response. In both cases, we are working in all the regions by partnering with uh, all our partners, like some of our partners may work in four regions, some of them may work in another five regions, some of them may work in two or three regions, one region. But in COVID response, currently we have got one or two proposals which are focusing in Addis, but also there are some proposals coming up uh, to cover some, some areas. For example, there is one proposal which covers all, the, whole, the whole nation. And uh, that is something which is being uh, discussed now. And I'm hoping that this will be approved in the coming three, four, four days to start in action. So uh, we are not simply limited in that. But we also try to link up also the existing partners, work the existing partners uh, initiatives into the COVID-19 response because uh, they are close partners, they know us, they know the context and also they can, uh, they have, they know how to work with young people, they know how to uh, discuss uh, with us. So they also will be our stimulants. They will move into another area of supporting young people in different areas. Some, 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 some partnership or some of the activities may, be, may need to be tweaked. Uh, what we have discussed, what we have agreed to in January may not necessarily be, the, be true at this time or in the coming one year period. Some activities that may have come now uh, to work in three regions across or in Addis may need to move into another uh, province. So uh, I think uh, we will be working in all, in all the regions and we are focusing more on the response now, but also the other partnership are also going on and we, are, we, we keep on working on that. We are having staff members and the foundation now in MasterCard Foundation. We didn't have much in Ethiopia. We have now many Ethiopians. And also we are being supported by uh, our regional program and also in Toronto and everywhere in Africa. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, before we go on the question, I would, uh, uh, in the, I, I see that uh, Rahel from Amsterdam has raised her hand and uh, HP users, I will give them uh, a mic real quick and we would come back. And uh, Rahel is in Amsterdam, she's the CEO for uh, R&D. Uh, maybe she can uh, also introduce herself. Okay, we would allow her to talk. Good morning, Rahel. Okay. Rahel, can you speak? You... I yes, think I think I can, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I already raised my question. Uh, so we have been working with small and medium enterprises in the past six, seven years. And uh, we currently are thinking of uh, programs to, to digitalize some of our programs. But we realize at the end of the day, access to finance will be one of the most important um, instruments that companies need. Uh, mainly uh, small and medium enterprises do not have the ability to 
to show collaterals. Uh, they may not by now have uh, known, so it, do, it means they don't yet have a relationship with the banks. Um, so my question to um, Mr. Alamayo is, what, what does the access to finance component entails? Uh, how quick can that be arranged? And uh, how do we solve the collateral issues for businesses? Right. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, may I take it? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, access to finance components. Well, I don't, I'm not sure, Rahel, if it's about the COVID response or is it about the overall Young Africa work in Ethiopia? Which one are you mentioning about? Um, mainly the COVID re response program because that are the one. This uh, okay. most of our SMEs are actually waiting for mm -hmm. some sort of solutions on that aspect. Yeah, on the access to finance response side, you know, uh, there are two, three areas like, you know, there are, uh, the, you know, we have identified the micro, small and medium enterprises in three areas, very highly, uh, in a very highly seriously bad situation, in the moderate situation, and also in a very, uh, in a better situation. So uh, our, we are trying to uh, establish a, a kind of, um, Long guarantee fund for a uh, long guarantee fund, which uh, which you will be working with uh, a number of banks, two or three banks, who can identify together with our partners, who can identify the the the, the, the different level of uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises to be supported. It can have two or three main components. One is it can be grant, uh, for example, the, for those who are totally gone out of business, it can be a grant. But also there could be a loan, uh, which would be like a very small interest loan, which will be uh, which will be facilitated through the bank through the bank. And uh, here uh, we are we are hoping to share this uh, this um, the, the 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 guarantee part with the banks as well. So the banks will also cover some part of the guarantee. Like if if we share the risk, 50% of the risk, they may share the risk 50%. So the, the arrangements are currently ongoing. We are currently working with our partners together with the banks, and this will come uh, into fruition maybe in the coming one or two weeks time. But definitely by next week, we'll see something very fruitful. But we identified these different levels, and also kind of grant will be there, but also kind of loans and long-term, short loans, soft loans, low interest rate loans will be, will be there. So the guarantee is largely to, 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 to give confidence to the banks or to financial institutions that uh, by providing access to finance to young people, to small enterprises, medium enterprises, we can support them move to the next level. We can support them to res we can rescue them from being totally out of the business. That's what we are thinking about. Thank you, Mr. Alamayo. I will allow HP uh, to ask a question, please introduce yourself. Uh, th there's only only an abbreviation. Okay, HP, can you hear me? I think you are on the mute, so you have to unmute yourself. Uh, maybe. And HP, would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Okay. Uh, somehow maybe there is a technical difficulty, so we will go to uh, other questions. Uh, I did get a question uh, that I can just summarize it uh, easily. Uh, some people are asking when you do the virtual job fair, uh, are you, uh, how about the connectivity for the students? Um, basically, uh, the, the website is done in a very um, low, uh, it requires only a low bandwidth so that there are no a lot of images and we're making it uh, uh, easy for people to, to see live. But in any case, if they don't have the access to internet or if they have a problem, everything is recorded and all the jobs and everything will be one month. So they could actually uh, participate in the offer at their, uh, uh, convenient time. The only thing after uh, live date, they will not be able to chat 
with a representative of the employer live chat will not be will be disabled but everything else the lecture that has been uh, uh, given will be recorded. Uh, the exhibition booth will stay for one month so they can apply, they can download, they can watch a video uh, whenever they have a good internet connection. So that's why we're, we're opening it up for one month so that it will allow them to, uh, to access it. Uh, another question that was asked is, um, how is the connectivity? Do all students or uh, uh, use have an access to this? In fact, we did a research and almost many of them have a telephone, tablets, and a computer, and an internet. They will be able to access it from anywhere. And uh, the one of the good opportunity that is creating this uh, for us is we will be able to do a mass training, a mass lecture uh, at once that we cannot have done in a physical uh, uh, environment. Um, so maybe Helena, if you have seen some of the questions. Uh, if you can answer, and then I'll go to see him. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to also launch the poll, the second poll for organization. Please go ahead, start filling out the, the poll while Helena is addressing some of the questions that was raised directly to her. Yeah. Uh, sure. Thank you, Lisa. So I think the question that was addressed to me is uh, by Akalu. If we have any programs that can help youngsters already lose their job due to COVID-19. Uh, so for us, what we're looking at, of course, the government has put in place uh, directives to ensure that people don't lose their jobs or at least go with a guarantee that they would be, uh, they would have their jobs once this, uh, once this issue uh, goes away. Uh, that's a positive for us, even though that still uh, impacts their income. But uh, some of the things, as you can see from uh, the Daraja work, uh, of course, we're trying to ensure that young people are able to get a job and also maintain uh, uh, their job. So we're trying to introduce uh, different activities with our uh, clients, with our employers, by uh, uh, encouraging them to have uh, at home internships uh, for new as well as uh, uh, already graduated young people who are uh, looking for uh, jobs and also encourage the young people because you can't also enforce or expect employers at this time to be actively hiring, uh, but at least they could actively do the sourcing and have their pool of candidates they would easily hire when this issue is resolved. But in the meantime, also the youth, uh, we're trying to have uh, different systems of communicating with the youth of different ways of enhancing their knowledge, uh, enhancing their uh, capabilities, so that by the time, uh, you know, everything is opening up and people are ready to hire, they'll be the first uh, to be reconsidered. And this would also involve their active self-discovery, uh, training themselves, keeping themselves, uh, building their capacity constantly. So those are some of the things that we're doing in terms of uh, young people. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Siham, I don't know if you can see the questions also directed to you. If you will be able to answer them, please. Um, yeah, um, thank you, Biscuit, for the question. Um, it's from uh, DI Joe. I, uh, there are number one recruiters in terms of hiring our first uh, graduate. Um, so thank you for that. And also, yes, we'll be introducing the this uh, National Career Expo. Uh, Yusuf has explained it very well. In terms of connectivity, um, one of the things and the partnership with MasterCard Foundation is also to support this program. Um, so in terms of reaching to the youth, uh, we'll be doing our, uh, um, whatever it takes uh, for the students to participate as well as to provide them internet packages uh, as long as they have uh, phones or uh, laptops or um, so we'll be able to do that uh, so that uh, the youth that we're targeting are not go, won't miss this uh, opportunity. Um, I think, yeah. Very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, please go ahead, continue filling out the poll. Um, one of the interesting are um, 
close to so far people who have filled out uh, are saying that you have a recruitment need within the next three months uh, in fact some of you are even have more than 50 people which is encouraging and the rest of you also have been responding within the next six months this is really encouraging to know and uh, we can see how valuable this is uh, for you uh, I think I'm coming to an end. I only have uh, one minute left. I do want to thank uh, His Excellency Dr. Ephraim for participating and giving us an insight what the government is doing uh, in terms of uh, COVID-19 response as a job creation. He also left uh, information on the website for job creation commission.gov.et. Uh, you can find the detail on the chat line and please go ahead and visit the website. I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Alamayo from Masaka Foundation, all his colleagues that joined us from uh, Toronto and a different part of uh, the world. I thank you so much for your time, for your valuable information and uh, for your partnership. Uh, we want to thank and I want to thank my colleague Helena and Siham for our standing performance uh, this morning. We really are excited and we want to be working with you and we are also planning to do uh, either weekly or bi-weekly talk and bringing in a speaker uh, from uh, tax authority, from uh, labor law, from Ministry of Labor explaining it to you how to overcome the challenges that we're facing in the uh, COVID-19 problem. I wish everyone to be safe, um, keep your social distancing, follow the WHO and the Ministry of Health of Ethiopia guidelines to protect yourself and your loved ones. And I wish um, uh, everyone uh, a happy Dagmawi Tinsae and uh, a happy Ramadan for those of you who are fasting this, uh, this Ramadan season. Thank you so much and uh, I would say goodbye, and if you have not filled out your uh, call, I will I will wait a little bit more so that I can allow you to fill it out. Otherwise, we will right here we will end our meeting, and this information will be available online. It's all recorded, and uh, uh, I am sorry if we cannot answer some of your question, but we will compile them and try to respond to your question via email, and uh, we will forward some of the relevant questions to either the Mastercard or. The job creation commission thank you very much and have a nice day all or good night for those